Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Lathrex, and of course, welcome to our next full playthrough episode. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the inward perfection type of empire, but this time taken to a bit of an extreme. This has one simple rule. We are going to be here for the long run. We are not going to be defeating the endgame crisis, we are not going to be interacting with other empires, so I suppose multiple rules actually, but the basic point is this. During this playthrough, I am not going to talk to any of the other empires, I am not going to go to war, I am not going to bribe them in order for them to not to attack us. We are just going to stay in our own territory and only our science vessels are really ever going to venture out. This is also true when the endgame crisis occurs, because what I would like is to see how long this empire can survive if it never interacts with the endgame crisis. Will I make it to 2500, 2600, or perhaps I'll be devoured far earlier since I'm allowing the endgame crisis to get to its full strength. So what we're going to need to do is focus heavily on tech. We are going to really, really focus on tech as much as possible in order to get all of the mega structures. We want ring worlds, we want the Dyson Sphere, we want the matter decompressor, we want everything so that we can really ramp up our space. So, it's going to be a tech rush, and then just keep on doing all of the repeatables until we are absolutely unstoppable. But until then, we're just going to ignore everyone. So this video will have a lot of stuff cut in comparison to the normal full playthroughs, so expect huge amounts of time to simply vanish. But first, let's take a look at the Empire, which was actually mostly named through just the random name generation, but I ended up liking it all. So for the Empire itself, it of course has inwards perfection, meaning it really can't interact with most other Empires anyway, but then it also gets a bonus 20% unity, 20% population growth, and 5% happiness. They are then environmentalists, because honestly I just couldn't decide what to have second, which means we use less consumer goods, which is really good, since we're already going to be focusing on tech a lot, which will need a lot of consumer goods, so to have them just naturally use less is really good. Though I was very tempted by the bureaucracy. That way we have less amenities and less housing, but I think I'll probably get that later. For the ethics, they are xenophobic and they are fanatic pacifists. This means all of their planets have additional stability and our admin cap is increased. Now, the admin cap is great early on, but a bit rubbish later when we get the repeatable to increase it anyway, but I still think this is probably the best thing to do, especially since we are meant to be ignoring everyone. Though we could do something perhaps like this instead. I just like this. So for now, we're sticking with that. For traits, they are conservationists, they are communal, and they are traditional. They are, however, sedentary and slow learners, because I just don't want them to change all that much. I want them to preserve the planets they're on. I want that to be sort of the theme. They're all about how beautiful their planets are and their territory is, and no one else will dare be able to enter their borders. Okay, so a bit of a change of plan. I've changed my mind about how this species is going to run. Instead of what we had a second ago, they are going to be intelligent, rapid breeders, and engineers at the cost of being weak and, quite painfully, being non-adaptive. This means we're not going to get many planets, or at least we're not going to get many good planets early on, but this can be changed later. The reason why I want this setup instead is I was thinking about it after recording a clip a second ago, and I really need to focus on engineering, I need to focus on getting all the stations up, I need to focus on getting mega engineering as soon as possible, otherwise we're going to not have them fast enough to really compensate for the slow start we're going to have, since we're not going to be focusing on fleets or anything like that, we're going to be quite weak for a long time, and I need my tech to really carry us. Now what we could do, is we could go as far as to do something like this. So instead of having Fanatic Pacifist, we go with Materialist. This way we have an extra research speed bonus, and we can use Academic Privilege, and we can even get other stuff later. In fact, we could change Environmentalist and get something like, where are you? Oh no, they've changed it, haven't they? So what I was going to say is Technocracy, but now that requires Fanatic Materialist. Which makes sense, because this would be insane. We could have something like Mechanist, so we instantly have machines and we can really rush into becoming synths. Which would be really interesting and really powerful as well. There's loads of ways to do this, but for now, I think I want to do it this way. Focusing on the fact we are going to be ignoring the galaxy, we are going with Fanatic Pacifist, which means our stability is good and our admin cap is good, and then our populations very rapidly increase in number, and they are incredibly intelligent, so we get loads of research quickly as well. I think that's probably the best call. 
So I think the reason why I'm going to be changing this really is because I am nervous about this run. I think that this is going to take a lot of my time to record, probably over many days. And if we mess up, it's really going to cost me just time-wise. But also, I feel like it's going to be very difficult. When the endgame crisis is here, we need to be prepared and we need to be able to scale and snowball incredibly quickly. Otherwise, we're just going to be swept away. Since if you don't take out an endgame crisis early, they become very powerful. So we need all of that to scale. And I think this is the best. And I'm actually tempted to go with... Where are you? Repugnant rather than non-adaptive. That's less amenities, but again, we can probably deal with that faster than we can deal with non-adaptive. No, let's go with non-adaptive. Let's just stick with that and let's get started. So if we go over to here, we're going to be having our maximum difficulty with the crisis strength. It's going to be at 2,300, so it's nice and early. In fact, 100 years earlier than the default. The AI is aggressive. Difficulties are max. Okay. And I think with that, we are good to go. Oh, and clusters for empire placement. You know what? I forgot I'd done that. It's going to make it more difficult, but let's go with that. And so we begin on the west of the map. Now, this time around, we really, really need to scout ahead. We need to find choke points, or we need to try and tell where our empire is going to be by the end. Now, we don't want loads of space, but we need enough space. Since we're going to be stacking ring worlds, we want our habitats and everything else. We want good choices for our habitats, since different types of world, different types of places you build the habitat will give you different results. For instance, if I build a habitat over this planet, it will give me research districts because as research there so I need loads of choices for that and it's going to have a lot of planning which is probably going to end in failure because it is me at the end of the day but still let's just see how well we can do really focusing on tech early on and let's allow you to survey the next one will be our scout I'm really hoping we can get a nice easy area to colonize which is nice and easy to defend we want as minimal points of entry as possible for our empire since we're going to have to defend them all so same as our previous run our precursor is in fact these fellows which means we get to make our worlds into Gaia worlds incredibly cheaply which is actually really nice I'm okay with this one okay I think we may have got incredibly lucky this fallen empire here is stopping other empires from reaching us. And this seems to be a dead end, but also a lot of spaces here. So what we need to do is reach here and here, put down bastions, and we are completely blocked in. Now, if this fallen empire awakens, we're dooming ourselves here. We're basically blocking ourselves in with them. But that's wonderful. That is actually fantastic. Which is weird, considering I set the galaxy to clusters, so I assume there'd be clusters of other empires around me. I mean, maybe there is. Maybe there's an empire right over here. I haven't found it yet. I can only just see the Anomaly systems. Discovered. Guess I'll find out soon, and hopefully I'm on my own. Drat. So it turns out it's not a perfect dead end, but it's still really good. We want this system, then. This system here is the most important system we're probably ever going to find, so... Survey that, and we're going to rush and claim that for ourselves. Then over here later. We could survey all the way, since we're going to be claiming it anyway, and that's probably going to be okay. I'll explore first, and still try and find other empires to figure out what's best to do. So, I've just finished expansion. And we've got the horizon signal. This is the earliest I have ever got this. So if I'm correct, this is where the worm event starts, which I started in the previous playthrough but never finished. But 15 years, it this is an insane start. What's in my starts recently? It seems I go through a patch of really terrible starts and then a patch of really great starts. I can never get in between. Situation log updated. Construction complete. We shall sacrifice all of our scientists to the glory of the worm. 
I mean, it's asked nicely. Omega theory is being researched both in society and in physics. Soon the worm will grace us with its presence. We've also opened the Loop Temple Visitor Center. I believe we've also just found the messenger, which means if we wish to, we can revert our species back to a more previous version, which is more aggressive and muscular. So, we're not going to do that, but we will do the research anyway in a little while. But for now, focus on the worm. A primitive society seems to be clocking on about the whole concept of the worm. What was, will be. What will be, was. System surveyed. Constru the primitives continue to be very bizarre at the moment, apparently worshipping the worm as we do. Fascinating! Send a team to study the rites. To participate, if possible. Situation log updated. So we need a transport vessel to get there. Okay, then. You're the closest? Send the transport. Okay, we've got there, and nothing's happened. It simply vanished. Hopefully something will pop up later. Glorious influence. Okay, so I think now we're setting up the final space of our empire. If we keep it like this, we have one entrance, two entrances, Three, if you count the Fallen Empire. Four. That's it. There are four entrances into our space, and that's it. That is incredibly easy to defend. On top of all this, there are no wormholes or anything else in our space, so there's no other way for them to jump into our territory without jump drives, which normally enemies don't really employ, even if they do have them. That seems perfect. We just stay here and ignore the rest of the galaxy. Change of plan. There's a ruined matter decompressor here. We're going for it. Other change of plan. There's a wormhole. We're grabbing this planet and stopping. That way we still have the same amount of exits. And honestly, these are just regular systems. Nothing too special. Still waiting for the next worm in waiting event. Which is a shame. Because honestly, I don't know what else I'm meant to do. I've already done the event at the primitive civilization. I've done the whole previous version pod thing. I guess I just have to wait now. Complete. We have found our neighbors and apparently they're not exactly friendly with each other. Lovely. Well, we'll just make sure to have a nice bastion here and we should be okay. And it's gonna be a long time before they ever reach us. So, all is well. And there we are. We've finished off our precursors and now we can start converting our worlds into Gaia worlds. Including any of these as well. Like their tomb world. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Going to grab the tomb world and then I'll turn that into our first Gaia. Okay, so a little bit of time has passed. I've had a break and then came back. And it turns out that one of the events earlier might have bugged out. Because when our ground forces approached this planet and then did the research, we should have lost the transport fleet, and then something apparently should have happened. I believe the world should have vanished, or the population vanishes, something like that anyway. But it didn't. Now I'm really concerned, because I've done everything else for the worm in waiting exactly how I've done it before, when I've then triggered the next event, but the next event isn't triggering, so... Really hoping it happens, but if it doesn't, oh well, we're still in a fantastic position, we're going to continue on anyway, I don't want to go back in the save file, I always hate doing that, even if a glitch does occur, but we'll just leave it as it is for now. But yeah, maybe no worm after all, which is kinda sad. 
Okay, so it turns out I was remembering this incorrectly. For some reason, I thought you instantly got the ability to build this as soon as you completed the last part of the Worm in Whiting, but in fact, you get it randomly. Well, it's a rare tech which unlocks silently after you complete the last two bits of tech, which are given to you automatically upon doing things. So, there we are. Let's do this. And by given you automatically, I mean unlock to be Technology researched. researched. Lovely. The worm is still on its way. It just needed some patience, which apparently I was lacking. The tomb world, which used to belong to the precursors, is now ours. And with that, we convert it into a Gaia world. And I think we should be keeping them around, the ones which have just spawned. Though uh, we're going to be less than kind to them, let's say that. No, not undesirable, silly. There's so many other uses they can serve. Especially since if you look here, they are delicious. They are livestock. That is our food production. That is fantastic. Now, do we allow them to breed or not? That's the question. Maybe we should. I mean, that's a lot of food. Per one, we are currently getting 9.5 food, so essentially the same as a farmer. But we're not really paying anything. Almost no housing, almost no amenities, and no consumer goods at all. Yeah, I would say, yep. Let them prosper. In their rather horrible new positions in life. What was shall be... What shall be, was. There we go. The Worm in Waiting event is now complete, and as you can see, we have a lot of planets now around our home system. The Worm has devoured our sun, leaving a black hole in its wake. And all of the worlds around it have now become tomb worlds, including our home world. But don't worry, our species now has tomb world preference. They have natural physicists, and they are now repugnant. Oh, does that mean they lose natural engineering? For a second, I thought maybe it would give us both. Eh, that's not a good trade, really. But it did just give us this many worlds. Which is kind of amazing, really. So, definitely worth it. Especially with the ability to slowly convert them all into Gaia worlds. I think considering we've just gave over our home system to the worm, we are definitely going to become telepaths. Mind over matter. This is our ascension. So now our people will be psychers. Lovely. How did I manage to get five of you left? Either way, I am removing the repugnant from our tomb world preference version. But now we are also latent psychics, meaning we get plus 5% to all research and plus 5 to energy. Now building our very first habitat. Just building it over a regular planet at the moment, which won't give it any bonuses because this is going to be one of the refinery worlds. After that, I am going to focus on trying to get minerals and energy and all that sort of stuff. Also, a little bit worried about this empire over here. It's going to be able to attack us either here or here soon, and it's really annoyed at us because we are xenophages. You know, we're eating xenos, which we are, so we are guilty of that. Either way, though, we're going to have to try and build up some bastions. So now I'm really focusing on alloys. I've gone from, like, plus 8 to plus 88 very, very quickly. As I say that. More forge worlds, more forge worlds everywhere. We are now going to be able to breach the shroud. Situation log updated. Hopefully we'll get a very good covenant very quickly, which would be lovely. I especially want the Composer of Strands, which will give us an increase to our population growth. Because we're going to go for Ringworlds, as soon as we can get them, we are going to need lots and lots of population. We reach into the Shroud for the first time, and... We get cursed. Good start. The Instrument of Desire. So, although this is not the composer of the strands, it is also a truly fantastic one for this empire. It simply means we get plus 10% resources from all jobs. This does indeed include alloys, science, everything. 
That's such a powerful bonus to affect everything. Yep, we're going with it because it's so early as well. I don't know when I'll get a chance to make another Covenant, and all of those years will add up where I didn't accept this. I actually don't know what negatives this one brings, though, so we'll find out together. Now approaching 2,300, it's been quite some time before I've even spoke, because honestly it's just been micromanaging, making sure everything's going okay, and honestly it doesn't look like we're doing that well. Our research is fairly low, our alloys are doing well, but everything else is kind of in the middle. But here's the thing, this groundwork is insane. The amount of worlds we have, especially good sized worlds, we have the habitats now coming up, some of them are turning into refineries, everything is about to explode. We are about to get a lot of research and a lot of alloys, very very soon, or at least it's going to begin. It's going to snowball slowly and get faster and faster and faster. Eventually, it's just going to be insane. But for now, I'm just hoping to get the mega engineering research soon, since I really, really want to start the ruined matter decompressor. Over here, it costs 20,000, but it goes all the way to the maximum level as soon as it's operational, giving us 2,000 minerals. That's enough to cover all of our consumer goods and all of our alloys. Construction complete. And more, honestly, for quite some time. And we can even build a second one, because that one doesn't count as us building one. Construction. There we are, Mega Engineering is now being researched. So, time to save up our alloys so that we can get almost unlimited minerals. But yeah, that's going to take some serious saving. Construction complete. I'm also getting quite nervous that we have no fleet. Thankfully, our neighbours over here, despite having some border friction, are only unfriendly with us and probably won't turn hostile because they have other enemies, honestly. And, again, there's just not enough need to hate us. These fellows, on the other hand, loathe us. Oh look, the Skrek. So, as soon as they reach our borders, we are likely to end up going to war. I am currently building a citadel in both of these locations, so we should be quite well protected but not really enough. It's good enough for a while, but we do need to start building up a fleet. So the question is, how long do I save up for? Here's hoping their fleets can't take down a fully armed citadel with defense structures. A new archaeology site has opened up over here. Now, this is the ancient tomb, which will open up randomly, sometimes, and I believe it contains the head of one of the holy figures for the Fallen Empire. If you have that, the Fallen Empire likes you a lot more, but also the relic itself can be activated to give you a small Fallen Empire-style fleet. It's not that powerful, but it is something, and it is just for influence. Definitely something to consider for the future, if I am indeed correct about this, which potentially I'm not. The Ruined Matter Decompressor is almost finished, and we are now also starting... The Science Nexus. So two of the megastructures are now finally coming up. On the downside, the enemy towards the north are now just about to take over this system, and then we're going to have a border with them, which will make it much more likely they're going to attack us. Not exactly thrilled about that, but thankfully our bastion is looking good, and we are about to start building our fleet up since we definitely have the alloys for it. I was just waiting for a bit more research. So build a fleet, move them right over there, and hopefully we can withstand their attack. The Bastion over here is also about the same strength. The funny thing is, we could easily prevent this war by bribing them or simply opening our borders that would take down their dislike from us from 100 to probably about 80 or 70. Very easily, if we bribe them enough, we could probably bring it down to zero, thus turning them from hostile all the way down to simply unfriendly. Where are you anyway? There we are. Currently overwhelming and hostile. Thankfully, though, they are at war with someone else, so for the time being, it seems like they're not going to attack us as well. On the upside, we are about to be uplifted. The enigmatic cash has returned out of nowhere and has offered us ascension, which we will gladly accept. The matter decompressor is now online. That is going to be absolutely lovely in just a moment. Now we really need to move some of these mining districts to everything else, because if we watch our mineral income, suddenly, there we go, plus 1,000. It's giving us 2,000 minerals, and we can create another one if we so desire, but now I can finally grab this. Galactic Wonders, unlocking the Ring World, the Matter Decompressor, and the Dyson Sphere. So, actually, I needed this to even build the second one, but still. 
I obviously wanted that, but you can't unlock that until you've either repaired or built a normal mega structure first. And what I would love is a ring world as soon as possible. Okay, so this is the first time we have been cursed by our covenant. And honestly, it's not the worst one ever, just lack of governing ethics attraction for a while. So, about 20 years? Sure, that's fine. Note, 20 years on one planet. Now beginning the building of our ring world, which is fantastic. We've also researched the ability now to create a Dyson Sphere, which means we can have almost unlimited power in the future. Now, I should also be able to build a second matter decompressor because that was repair, not build. The problem is, I'm now noticing a problem. We don't have a second black hole in our territory. Really? That's the only one. Oh, wait, what am I talking about? The home world. Though I'm not sure if you can build the matter decompressor where you have planets which you inhabit. Never mind. I found a second black hole. I just wasn't paying attention. Excellent. And yep, there we go. The Fallen Empire should now like us quite a bit, which is fantastic. And we have the head of Zarklan. Which is cool. Well, some lovely chap just opened up the L gate, or at least has unlocked the L gate. So now what I'm going to do is move over my fleets to there, just in case. Also, also, this means now there is an additional way to get into my empire, which is really annoying. I felt so safe, and now I feel so annoyed. Thankfully, I only have one L gate in my territory. Yep, that's okay. At some point, what I'll need to do is reinforce this territory here. Now, there is a Leviathan here, the Dimensional Horror. So I might need to do two Bastions, just in case. Because I think, well, actually most, if not all, of the Endgame Crisis should just kill that and go straight through. So I need to defend those two. Two more Bastions, three more Bastions. As soon as I get the repeatable, get some more star bases, that should be fine. Okay. By the way, let's move everything over here. I don't think I can open the L gate, right? No, but someone else can, and they will very, very soon. I don't even want control over it, honestly. I just need to make sure things can't get through to us. I'm now realising as well, there's no mid-game event yet. None of the... Fallen Empires have suddenly woken up. Special project complete. And none of the Raiders are suddenly raiding everyone. Just everyone's being pretty chill, honestly. It's weird. Please. Oh, come on. Influence is the one thing I desperately need at the moment. Well, this should be interesting. Create Thrall World. We do this, we turn it into a Gaia world, then we put those plants there. Construction complete. We're going to get an insane amount of food. And we do have a planet left over at the moment, so... Construction seems complete. pretty perfect to me. Right now, I'm focusing so much on alloy production, my research isn't really increasing all that fast. That will change soon enough, though, and I think this is now the finalised version of the Science Nexus. And currently, we have loads of bonuses to the speed. So, we have... If we take a look, see, we have this over here, the Ambition, which is increasing it by 50%. We then have Living Metal Mega Construction, which is another 50 and then if we go over to Unity, we have Master Builders, another 50, and still it takes this long. We still don't even have the first section of the Ring World up and running. Soon we will. Though I don't think I'll have the alloys to make the next one straight away. But still, at least it'll be basically ready. Still making habitats in the background as well. My fleet is looking better than it was, but not exactly scary. Well, at least it isn't an aggressive event. So there we are. Immature Eldrake Dragons. I'll just leave you alone since you are going to be leaving our space by your own volition. 
knows harming our glorious people, trying to kill something which is going to leave us anyway. The Science Nexus is now complete. Wonderful! Which also gives us a percentage bonus to our research. So then, what do we make next? I suppose the Dyson Sphere. Might as well make it over here somewhere far away from everything else. Or we could start making a second ring world. No, at this point we definitely need energy. Okay, so you move over there. And start it as soon as possible. Oh yeah, of course, you can just teleport. And since we have the Psi teleporters, you can make it almost all the way. Fantastic. This world has been colonized, so with that, we can turn it into our Thrall world. Although, I need to move over some of our populations. So which one of you has the plants, is the question. I've been moving them all to one planet, but I can't for the life of me remember which it is. There we go. Fantastic. And with that, we'll turn it into our Thrall world. So, now it's a Thrall world, we get plus 50% population growth. However, we can't build all of the usual buildings, which is a shame. Ooh, but we can build the processing facility. Fantastic. Oh, only farmers produce extra food. Well, obviously, you're livestock, not farmers, but I want to see if that works. I doubt it will, but let's find out. Oh, yeah, we also need overseers, don't we? So I really shouldn't have moved the other populations away. It's been a while since I've done this. There we are. Overseers who will keep everything in order. I thought you couldn't grow free populations anymore here. I mean, that's fine too. There we go. Now it's changing. And I'll turn this into a Gaia world soon. So it turns out it has been way too long since I've done this, because as you can see here, the overseers are actually the owned populations. So we really didn't need this yet. So right now we're getting no food. So instead, I'll swap it over to that. And we'll build the facility. Well, here's something I didn't even consider. Apparently, the plant people are agrarian. Food from jobs increased by 15%. That even goes if they are livestock. That's kind of insane. Sadly, though, this is absolutely worthless. Because they can't work that as livestock, we'll never get food from them. Though I do wonder, would I get more food from them being a farmer... Or them being livestock. I could alter the species on this planet so they're no longer livestock. Although I can't remove any of that, what I can do is remove some of it or change one of the preferences. That way it's a different species, I can give it different rights. So I can just make it a normal owned population so it can work the farms instead. Would that be better? As livestock gives me 14 will the bonuses, a farmer gives me, by default, 6 each. Then all the other modifiers. No, I still think livestock is better. Might be wrong about that, but certainly the easiest, since, since I don't need any districts or buildings for it. Well, I'm finally earning enough now that we can have multiple of these Ringworld sections all up at once. In a second, I'll start that one as well. Complete. Come on, I want to see if I can actually have that many up at once. Thank you. Complete. Oh yes. Yes, I can. Lovely. And now we have the influence. Once I have enough alloys, I'll also start the Dyson Sphere, which I really should have started first. Eh, maybe I should have. Either way, I like Ringworlds. Complete. The Spiritualists have awoken. That is honestly terrifying, and we cannot submit to them either, because if we do, they'll turn us into spiritualists, which I do not want. We'll also lose 25% of our mineral energy income. If it was a xenophile empire, I would actually probably just give up, because they don't really do all that much other than, oh wait, no, you can't have own populations if you do that. So never mind, no matter who would have woke up anywhere, it would have been terrible for us. Problem is, though, they are right next to us, and I haven't really built up this bastion yet. I've literally just started, apparently a good time. Moving my fleets there now, and now concentrating on fleet creation. So, whilst I'm doing this, I can't actually start construction of the Dyson Sphere. 
and I build two mega structures at a time, but it will allow me to build three of these at once, but apparently they still count though, which is really annoying. So as soon as one of these is finished, then we build the Dyson Sphere, which we need to do soon, because at the moment, a lot of my resources are being diverted just to keep our energy going. Really should have done that first. Increased happiness? Minus 20% happiness. The Shroud loves me, clearly. Interesting, the Empire, which doesn't really mind us, is invading the Empire, which has been threatening us earlier. And I don't quite know what the Awakened Empire is doing. Oh, no, no, I now know what the Awakened Empire is doing. I think it may have used the Elgate to start invading over here. That's fine by me. Just ignore me and everything's fine. Nipside, I have loads of influence. Sorry, but nope. We do not interact or accept anything from Xenos. Turns out earlier, when I was talking about how many mega structures I can build at once, I completely forgot about this ambition, which does indeed increase my build capacity by one, so I can build three at a time, not just two. Now it all makes a lot more sense. The first stage of the Dyson Sphere is now online, and already we are now actually in positive when it comes to energy, even though we are over the top of starbase capacity and navy capacity. Over here, the new ring worlds are being created, which will be almost completely all about science. I've kind of neglected science for alloys and doing other stuff, which is a little bit silly. Though, to be fair, it's only 2,348. The only reason why it seems so late in the game is because I've set the crisis to be so early. Also, I'm getting very tired right now, which is making speaking incredibly difficult. Because, you know, normally I talk so well and stuff, innit? So, whilst I've just been sitting around, upgrading all of our stations, upgrading our planets, upgrading our ring worlds, the Crusaders have been, well, fairly successful. All that is green is now theirs. The Awakened Empire has done exceedingly well. Which is actually good for me, because any endgame crisis will now also have to deal with those. As everything else is being constructed, I am now also building the Coordination Center. When this is built, it will increase our sublight speed, it will increase how many star bases we can have, and I believe it also increases the naval capacity, and I think it may also increase something else, but either way, it's going to be very important because I've just realized I still haven't built any gateways. Or, you know, researched the tech for gateways. I'm a good player, I just complete. pretend to be this bad, so everyone else feels better. Aren't I a lovely person? I'm also falling asleep. I mean, that doesn't help either. Lots of micromanagement. As the whole galaxy turns green. It's getting pretty late now, but there's still no Endgame Crisis. Now, I'm fairly certain there is a modifier with how light the Endgame Crisis is and the chance of it being certain Endgame events. I think the Scourge is a higher chance the longer it takes, so I may be wrong about that. Either way, though, the Dyson Sphere is now fully online. I'm upgrading almost all of my stations. We are over the limit for stations and for Navy capacity, but thankfully we're producing so much energy and so many alloys, it really doesn't matter all that much. So the question is, what do we build next? The Ring World is finishing off over here. This one is finished. This one is finished as well. So we either make yet another Ring World, or we could make a new Matter Decompressor. And we have already built the site for that, so... New Matter Decompressor it is! Even more minerals! So we have the Matter Decompressor building, the Coordination Center, and the final section of this ring world. This is actually insane. I think this is the most advanced I've ever been in a game. And considering in a normal game, the end game crisis occurs... Wait, in a normal game, when does the end game crisis occur? I'm going to go back to the settings and find out what the default settings are. Okay, so this is how we set it up. And if we press default... Okay, so normally the end game is 2400, which means it spawns at 2450. 
Yeah, we would be in a really good position for that. Like, stupidly good. I mean, even now, I think we're just going to dominate. But saying that, we are going to be leaving the endgame crisis to get to full strength, which I never do. So I am still nervous, even though this is probably the most powerful empire I've ever played to this point. So here's something. Because we have the relic, and we are the chosen of Zarkian, we can actually safely colonize holy worlds. Now, I never realized this. Now, honestly, it doesn't matter as much now anyway, because we are kind of far stronger than the Fallen Empire, the Awakened Empire. If it attacked us, we would obliterate them now. But still, I knew it made them like us more, but I didn't think it would make us completely immune to them being annoyed at us for taking over the Holy Worlds, which are always Gaia Worlds. So that's nice. More refineries, more refineries everywhere. The Unbidden. Hello there, lads. Okay, I'm actually really happy about this because I wanted to test out just how good pure anti-shield stuff would be. Now, of course, when you're fighting the Unbidden, realistically, you should go for anything which ignores shields to go for their hull. I'm well aware of this. But I love cannons. In this game, I think it's very apparent how many times I've said it, cannons are my favourite weapon by a long shot. I love how they look, I love how they act, they're just really fun weapons. So, I'm going to retrofit all of our battleships now to just have anti-shield cannons, and that's it. I wonder where they're going to spawn. Here's the thing, if they spawn in our territory, this run's actually over. Well, it's going to be a while anyway till the breach point, so... I guess now we just... Wait. Oh, it's there! Oh, it's there! That's really close. Actually, that's really annoying, because the problem with that... ...is that they're not going to expand very easily, because they're going to keep on attacking me. Oh, wait, no, they can go this way. Yeah, they're going to keep on attacking me, rather than expanding. I was hoping they'd spawn somewhere a bit further away. Our fleets are moving into position into this section over here. I'm going to be building two more stations. These two are going to be shipyards, which will be able to supply these two stations. These two stations, of course, will be the main front for battle for quite some time. What I'm hoping is they will continue to expand and not just keep on throwing forces into the same section over and over again. Otherwise, we're just going to be sitting here and it's going to be quite boring. I want to see them expand and take over the galaxy. I want the Unbidden to be here and me to be here. Don't know why I pulled that voice for then. That was really weird. Complete. I'm possessed. Okay, so all new ships are going to be pure cannons. And honestly, the ones we have currently are almost there anyway. So we're not too bad versus them, even to begin with. Station there and station there now being built, which will both be there purely to back up our forces. Also, yep, you're almost done, so I can start building a new ring world very soon as well, which is lovely. I think they're still trying to decide what to do. Odd. Well, it gives us a little bit of time anyway to move our fleets into position. Okay, there they go. For a second there, I was really worried they were actually bugged. It seems like they were waiting for that station to completely decay. They're going that way first. Oh, of course, because they want to take over the worlds. That makes sense. We have the coordination center. So what this is actually giving us is plus 150 naval capacity, plus 6 on our starbase capacity, plus 12 on our maximum defense platforms per starbase, and then plus 15% on our sublight speed. Which is really, really nice. Now over here, what I might need to do is destroy these marauders ourselves, then take over these two systems so we have two bastions here and here, because otherwise, when they eventually get around, which thankfully is going to take quite some time, it's going to be far too difficult to defend all of this. It would be much easier just to defend these two. As they'll probably take out the dimensional horror. Psionic shields! Wonderful. I believe that may be the strongest shield type in the game. Either way, though, it's a very strong shield type. 
upgrading all of our stations so that they have shielded defense structures. So pure shields and pure anti-shield. It's actually pretty scary, honestly. Especially now I'm focusing all my tech on kinetic and shields. I really wish there wasn't a wormhole here, because if we look at this, the next problem we have is the enemy are also going to be attacking us from here, so it would be better to just grab this system, so go to war with these, or wait for them to be destroyed, because remember, we can't interact with them, then grab that, but I suppose that's kind of part of the challenge, we're not meant to interact with them, we're not meant to leave our borders unless we absolutely have to, so defending both of these locations is going to be a nightmare, but it's just what we're going to have to do. I should also mention, since I don't know if I covered this, I do have Defender of the Galaxy as our last Ascension perk. I was torn between Defender of the Galaxy and the ability to turn our planets into cities, but complete. yeah, that does seem to be the better option. Just a bonus 50% extra damage. Since we're going to be constantly under attack, especially once the rest of the galaxy is devoured, we need every bonus we can get. So in the video itself, it probably looks like things are happening quite quickly, but there is so much micromanagement now that we have so many worlds. It is actually a little bit insane. So, next time, or at least in the future, I might try and do a run where I can't pause. I've also been thinking about attacking the Marauders here, and I think that does go against our rules. The whole concept of attacking anything outside of our borders and really interacting with them. Now, of course, the main point for this is if we have a look at our empires... We can't simply bribe them, for instance, to not dislike us, we can't open our borders, anything like that, to try and make it easier for ourselves. We didn't really need that in the end, but that was the main goal of it. But I also still feel like going outside and attacking these is against the rules. So, a bit more difficult for us, since now we have to defend three locations rather than two. But I think we can manage it. It'll be nice as well once our fleets are all properly converted. Right now, the ones over here, for instance, aren't fully shielded, and they are still using some neutron launchers. Still, though, getting the job done. The ships over here, for instance, are all fully converted. That should be enough to ward off at least one fleet. So that's okay for now. We're building up a second, and our next ring world is underway. Well, since our Ringworlds can easily hit over 1k of each research type per section, I now have a science vessel heading to every single one of our Ringworld sections. So that should be a huge amount of increase later on. Complete. Okay, they're there and there, so soon they'll probably start attacking this, which should be absolutely fine. They're slowly expanding this way. Looks like the full, sorry, the Awakened Empire may have put up some of a fight. There are some damaged construction vessels and a few fleets with lowish health. That may have been slowing them down a little bit, but that won't last very long. In fact, they may have been destroyed. Yep, they are only over here now. So the Awakened Empire has essentially been all but defeated. Cannons definitely work. So one of these fleets isn't fully upgraded, the other two are. Either way, though, that was beautiful. Did I lose anything? No, fantastic. Because of our range, and because of how much we hard counter them, this is basically the minimum we're going to need in any given point. With this much, we don't lose anything when they attack us, and so they can just stay there forever without any need of constantly being reinforced. So we need that level of force here... Here, 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 here. So we need five more sets of those. Right, three, four, five. Yes, I can math. No, actually, six, because this as well. Eventually, they will hit the L gate. This is going to be a bit worse in terms of defending, just because of where it is. Essentially, we're going to have to the force over here so that we can get the range advantage, but they will definitely be able to attack the Citadel. Bad timing for that, but there we go. Apparently there's been a machine uprising over here. And I'm now sending my forces away. 
moving them from here over to here, because honestly, we are just overkilling it with our defences. If they ever do attack us with multiple fleets, we simply will lose a system or two, then we will rebuild it and take it over by moving all of our forces to that one location. But now I think it's about time we start setting up our permanent groups so that we don't need to keep on doing this over and over again. And actually, while they're moving, I can upgrade them to finally make them completely counter the enemy. Okay, three already going there, so let's defend here next. Okay, that got way closer than before. Do we lose anything? No. Took way more damage, though. Yeah, so these groups aren't as good versus the Unbidden as the other sets of three. And you can really tell the enemy got right next to us. Thankfully, not a single death yet. And this is one of the reasons why I love battleships for defense, especially against Endgame Crisis. Obviously, against other players, they can be countered so easily. But against very specific enemies where you know exactly what they are... Battleships are fantastic, just because that long-range capability, and they have to do a fair bit of damage before they start falling. Of course, when they start falling, then they're all dead, but still. The Titans definitely aren't worth it either, but they look so cool. I love the Avian Titans. In fact, I just love the Avian ships in general. The Avian and the Reptilian ships are by far my favourite. And since we are birds at the moment, we are using the Avian ones. Okay, yeah, you three... Go and upgrade instead. Forgot to do that. Uh, you're ready to move out. You'll be the second one over there. That's a lot of leaders we have. And now, they all have the increased lifespan trait. Lovely. Finally, to make our energy a little bit more sustainable, I am building habitats over energy reserves. That way, we can get the reactor districts on the habitats, and they will produce a lot of energy. In addition to this, I'm finally leveling up this, so we get some more energy per job. So, combine the two, and hopefully soon, we'll be back in the positive for energy reserves. At the moment, it's in the negative because, well, we are far above our starbase capacity and our navy capacity. Honestly, we may need to build even more starbases because the navy capacity is particularly brutal at the moment. As I defeat yet another fleet, I just want to answer a quick question which was asked of me the last time I did something similar to this, when I had bastions for defence and then also battleships around them. Why don't I move the battleships back and then use the bastion and the battleships all at once? Because the battleships will move and then by the time they're engaged in combat, the bastion will also be helping because the bastion is very, very powerful. The reason is, the defense structures, the defense platforms, are quite frail, despite the fact I'm constantly upgrading them, and they don't have the range of the battleships. As you can see here, their combat computer doesn't give them extra range, whereas our battleships, which all have the artillery version, get an extra 20%. And in fact, this is the reason why they're outranging the Unbidden. Although the Unbidden's weapons are just about as long range as ours, they don't get the plus 20%, meaning we have that 20% of range to fire at them without taking any return fire. The Bastions don't have that. So if the Bastions are in range, it means the Bastions are also being hit. And we are going to lose defense platforms. They're there more as a backup if our fleets fail because they will do so much damage. Now finally bothering to add crew quarters to all of our bastions. At least the ones holding this many fleets. Colonization initiated. So here's something to note, and by the way, ignore the minus energy, that's because I just messed something up. But, robot! Servitude. Not actually what I originally intended. I actually changed my policies to give them citizen rights, and then never changed it. Now, of course, we are xenophobes, which means I can never actually make them full citizenship, but I could have made them happier. These are synths. Although they are just called robots still, they are actually synthetics. They are completely sapiens. Well, got 300 of you almost without really doing anything about it, so I'm afraid you are... As the game puts it so elegantly. A toaster will always be a toaster.
That is all. Our neighbours continue to try and bribe us to be our friends, but of course, we simply ignore that. Then Bidden continue to expand. The game is slowing to a crawl, of course. And now, finally, we have 0% penalty from our Empire Sprawl. Our admin cap is now above our Empire Sprawl, and we are closing in at 50,000 research. I know you can do way better than that, but I am remarkably happy there. Remember that plan earlier where I was going to have my ships over here, have a station here? That way, we can move in, we can have the range advantage, everything's all good. Well, it turns out that's a terrible idea. The reason is, as soon as the enemy spawn here, they will instantly take out the station. As in, one shot. For some reason, I thought because these fellows are in combat, I wouldn't lose the station, only have it turned off. But no, we lose it. Also, our fleets are now rivaling the Unbidden's fleets 1v1, so we're going to have to have our ships nearby, which is kind of horrendous. Also need a ship nearby all the time so I can keep on rebuilding, because of course we have the matter decompressor. There's a good chance it might simply not be worth building up the Citadel each time, because even if we instantly enter combat with them, they can still fire on the Citadel, no matter how close we are. That's really annoying. It's more of an irritant than anything else, honestly. It's not a big deal, it's just, yeah, annoying. It occurs to me that next time I do something like this, where I'm going to have a long time of just micromanaging, not much really happening, I might record the entire thing as a time lapse. As it stands at the moment, the footage really isn't good enough for that, but that is definitely something I'll consider doing in the future. Now, with this, I'm actually going to start producing some minerals here, because sadly, we are running out. That's right, we have two matter decompressors, and we're running out of minerals. But we are now at 55k research, and the enemies seem to have just kind of left us alone. As you can see, they've moved away from here. It seems like they're expanding a lot more over here now, and a lot more towards the south. Are they actually... I don't really know what they're doing. We are running into the problem of the endgame crisis just being a bit weird. They tend to double back on themselves a lot and kind of patrol their own area rather than being really, really aggressive. You would think they'd be far more hostile, but no. Though to be fair, our fleets now are looking very, very scary. Yeah, we have fleets now of 360k and that's only getting stronger and stronger and stronger. 220% bonus kinetic weapon damage with 25% extra speed. We have extra fire rate because we are in our home territory. We do 50% bonus damage versus the endgame crisis. Yeah, we are pretty powerful. Yep, it is 50%. For a second, I thought I was wrong there. For once, Lathrox is right. Well, one of them definitely got to shoot. So, at this point, I'm just building habitats around, because honestly, our main issue right now is just refineries. So we constantly need some more refinery worlds, and eventually, I am going to go ahead and build some habitats above the mineral worlds. Thus giving us more and more minerals. These citadels are looking more frightening than ever, we're about to hit 400k on our single fleets. And I've now built a ring world around every single star I can. Remember, you can only build a ring world around a, a single starred system, if I can use my words. And you can't build one if you already have a planet there. So, how many ring worlds do we have? So we have one ring world, two, three, none there. Then we have four, five, six, seven here. And I believe that's that. Now, I did mess up with this. I really should have built this somewhere else. And I can't build a ring world here because I already have a mega structure here. Because once you build the ring world, you essentially destroy all planets on that system. As you can see, it's all nice and clean. Okay, here we go. So the second event. The ships that have been emerging from the second wormhole are very similar to the ones that came from the first, but there are several subtle differences between them. Furthermore, early reports indicate that ships belonging to these new invaders have clashed with those of the first group. We have intercepted a powerful signal emanating from the second wormhole. 
Hello there, glorious yellow version! So this is where you ran. This realm will offer you no shelter. We shall deal with you, and then claim this feeding ground for ourselves. So where are they, is the question. Please don't be like right here. No, apparently not. So where? Through the power of tracking the situation log, you know what I should have done at the start, we have found the Aberrant, which are over here, right next to the Unbidden. And that really, really blends in. The Unbidden have been spreading decently, but still far slower than I would expect. One of the main reasons, it seems, is that every time they claim a new area or anything else, the construction vessel and its guard then go and do a bit of a patrol, going to somewhere else completely. So rather than just having the construction vessel here, and then for instance building out here, 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 it will then go off and perhaps build over here instead, whereas the construction vessel over here will move somewhere else entirely. At least that's what it seems like to me. I might be wrong there, as I normally am, but that's certainly what it seems like. Well, that didn't take long, and I am honestly surprised by this, but apparently the Unbidden destroyed the second group. That was really quick. Now, I'm fairly certain there are other groups which can spawn, but I don't know if they can spawn after the second's been destroyed. Will that mess up the event? I don't really know. Well, we've had this event happen a lot of times in the past in previous playthroughs, but here we are yet again, after going to the Shroud for maybe the 100th time. Now our leader, the glorious Queen Cloudwing I, is the chosen one. Governing ethics attraction plus 20%, our influence is increased by one every month, and of course, she is immortal. This leader is the chosen one, an immortal being that wields incredible psionic power. Fantastic. Now, honestly, this could have been any leader I sent, but because I knew what the event was, I sent her, and thankfully, we managed to succeed. Sorry, Prince, but you're forever going to be the Prince. Oh, no, Princess. If I can actually read, that would probably help. Um... Really? This can happen this light on, after other events have occurred? The Sleeper Awakes! So, the Skrek Authority, wow, that's a really big title there, the Skrek Authority, attacked one of the Marauder groups, and because of that, they got very annoyed. Hiya. Well, you're a bit light, bud. There's other threats in the galaxy right now, and honestly, you're probably not all that strong in comparison. Well, good luck. You'll probably last five minutes, but prove me wrong. Well, that didn't take long, but at least they got some space out of it. So, I've got to realising that perhaps we can get a full 1 million fleet power fleet. And I think the easiest way to do that is with Corvette Spam. So here we are making a Corvette Spam fleet. Here comes the rest of the reinforcements, and I think we're going to be about 200,000, 150,000, something like that shy. So, we are still going to need some more upgrades. But that is truly terrifying. Each Corvette is worth just over 3,000. Engaging hostile fleet. Oh, and there's a fight somewhere. And they're gone before I arrived. Well, they tried. Okay, so here's something I completely forgot. I have not upgraded these since I got the new shield. So now I've installed some of the new shields, this is going to make them even stronger. Still probably going to need a couple of upgrades, but we are so, so close to one million. Hostile fleet sighted. And this is currently how the Unbidden are progressing. Relaying transmission. So, as usual, I'm just focusing on kinetic weapon upgrades and shield upgrades. Soon enough, that will be hitting the 1 million mark. We are also still amazingly below our admin cap. Researched. Okay, group three. Situation log updated. This time, green. Green. 
Once again, it spawns surrounded by Unbidden, so most likely that is about to vanish. There we have it, the 1 million fleet power corvette spam, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, our regular battleship groups are almost at 700,000 and are honestly far more useful, but I would just love to see what this corvette spam can do. And because I am going to be calling this playthrough very soon, after three days of recording and more raw footage than any of the other full playthroughs, I think I'm just going to break the rule, exit our border, and start attacking some of the unbidden. I want to see if we can beat some of the other fleets using just corvettes, which we really should be able to, but the corvettes don't normally stand as well as the battleship spam. But it is 1 million fleet power. Funnily enough though, although I just said I have more raw footage for this playthrough than pretty much any of the others, I think it's also going to be one of the shortest ones in terms of the actual length of the video, purely because it was just so much micromanagement. After looking at all of the footage, yep, it's just a lot of stuff which isn't going to end up in the finished product. And as you can see on the right, I started getting a little bit lazy with the micromanagement as well. So what I was allowing to happen is allowing a few months to pass where all of the planets just got on with whatever they were doing and then I would fix them all and then allow time to once again progress. Once again, I need to do a no pause challenge at some point. Either way, no point in fixing that now since we'll be ending soon. Let's move out the swarm. Oh, I completely forgot that. We were under the effects of some bonuses whilst we were in our own terrain. So I'm just under one million, but I'm so close. Oh, well. Technology researched. And finally in range. Wow. Yep, once the damage was actually happening, it just chunked off all of its health in maybe two or three full hits. That is lovely. Did I lose any Corvettes? No, I did not. That's a surprise. Well, they are very bad at shields. I just expected one of the Corvettes to perish. Now, where are the fleets? Kind of everywhere. You know what? I'm just going to run it into this. It's going to be glorious, and we're probably going to lose all of them. But it will be glorious. Actually hovering over the health makes it very apparent this thing is just insane when it comes to damage. And by this thing, I mean the swarm. It is one entity. Before we attack the main group, let's do this. Plus 10% damage to shields. Seems only fitting since I'll be fighting both their ships and the station. Technology. Hurry up again, range. The Corvettes might win this, but it's going to be close. Nope, they are absolutely dominating. Oh, one more fleet to help out. Can the Corvettes continue their vicious streak? Oh, well, there goes one of them. Well, there we have it. Oddly enough, Corvette spam, plus loads of upgrades, 
is kind of terrifying. But with that, I am afraid I am all out of time for today's episode. This has been really fun to play, despite the fact it seems a little bit boring in some ways. It's just not particularly video friendly. Next time, I'll do a bit more of an out there challenge. I do kind of want to play mods, so feel free to tell me what you'd like to see in the comments below. And with that, if you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Now, I would have loved to just allow this to continue until the Unbidden completely claims the rest of the galaxy, but we're already at a point where, honestly, they aren't really that much of a threat, and we're getting more powerful at an increasing rate. And also, the game has really slowed down as well, so it would have taken so many more hours to really have anything of interest happen, and even then, not in a major way. Still, though, Turns out, being lonely and just defending your borders is a very good way to go, as long as you have a good start. Which you really did. Hopefully next time, the start will be less insane. Thank you again for watching, and goodbye.